Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Raindrops Keep Fallen, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Merlot. I'm sure you could find some other names to call this. There's lots of songs with the name Rain in it that are very appropriate, um, but that's what I'm gonna go with. So if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. For my paint, I am using acrylic paint. I have titanium white, Mars black, green oxide, deep yellow, fire red, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, and fluorescent orange. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round brush, and I have a number one round brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up a little bit as well if, you, if you'd like to. And if you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through the painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the paint and the brushes and all that good stuff, so that's down there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are doing our forest, which is gonna be out of focus and it's gonna take up a whole big area of the um, painting. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, green, and yellow. And I'm gonna be applying my paint in a circular motion. I'm gonna have pretty dark spots throughout it. I'll have some, some good black patches throughout it. But as I come down towards where it's gonna, in essence, kind of meet the ground, I'll get it a little bit lighter with using more greens and yellows. But I'll show you how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna bring it down about two thirds of the way. So in order to know where that is, we're gonna make a couple of little markers and that'll give you a visual stopping point. So if you visually find about your halfway point on the side of your canvas, then go halfway between there and the bottom of your canvas. That's gonna give you about a quarter of the way. And then you go about halfway between those two. And that's gonna give you about a third of the way um, up your canvas or two thirds of the way down your canvas. And for me, it's just a little bit taller than my brush. So I'm gonna go over to the other side and it doesn't have to be exactly at the same spot. You just wanna give yourself a visual um, marker so you can stop appropriately. So I'm just gonna start with a little bit of black on my brush, I didn't wash the green off, and I'm just gonna give myself some really dark, almost patches. Um, and by, by doing this and leaving these soft edges to it, as I start to introduce, let's say, green to the equation, it's gonna give me these nice areas that contrast from one another but also blend nicely along the edges because I'm leaving these soft, soft um, spots along the edges. So I just picked up some brown and I'm really just gonna kind of alternate green, brown, and black throughout this area and without washing my brush. And then as I get down towards the bottom, my two thirds of the way down my canvas, I will start to introduce some of that yellow in a more obvious way. So right now I'm, I'm just using, alternating my green, black, and brown. 
And you might find that you want to do multiple layers on this particular step. Uh, it's going to be a visual preference for you once you see how how it appears when it when it's done. Uh, but depending on the brush you're using, your brush might leave evident of brush bristle marks on it, uh, which, which some people like and some people don't like. So if that's if yours is doing that and you're not fond of it, you can certainly just wait for it to dry a minute and then just add a second coat on top of it. Uh, and that will definitely help to soften this appearance. Another thing that might happen is you might end up having too much paint on your brush and what could happen is all of your colors could end up blending together and looking like one solid color. So if that happens, what you might want to do is either wash your brush and kind of start back from, from square one and not put so much paint on your brush. I'm going to start using yellow. I'm ch changing my thought process for a second. I'm picking up a little bit of yellow now because I feel like I'm getting down towards the end. Um, but again, if you feel that your colors are blending too much together, you can let it dry. You can work on a, you know, a second layer on it if you'd like to after it dries. That will help to separate those colors or try using less paint every time on your brush. So I'm not using a ton of paint. I am using a thinner body paint. It's a student grade paint. So this allows me to kind of keep moving this paint as it's drying, which helps my, my blending process. And it also helps me to control how much paint I have on my, on my brush and what it's doing on my canvas. But you might be working with different paint. Maybe yours is a little bit heavier bodied than mine. And it might be a little bit more difficult to get these sections to, to blend together. So if that's the case, again, you can do the, the second layer on top of it or just kind of um, trial and error getting, getting those, the, the paint to the way that you want it. If you want your paint to be a little bit thinner, you can always add either a touch of water to it or you can add a liquid medium to it. That will help to get it a little bit on the more fluid side. And again, I'm just kind of getting it a little bit lighter as it comes down towards the base of my, of my forest. I don't want it to go too, too bright on me, but I definitely want it to have little pops of that yellow on in there. And then we will be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your, your forest on here, and again, if you want, you can certainly do a second layer on it. But once you've got this forest down here, what you'll want to do is we're going to want to wash and dry this large brush as I'm just finishing up here. Wash and dry this large brush and we'll get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the distant meadow. <laughs> I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm going to be using are yellow and white. And I'll probably use a little bit of green and maybe a little bit of brown up at the top of it. I'm going to put this meadow in this section so it looks like it's off in the distance behind the mushroom and the frog. And I'm going to bring it, uh, it's going to occupy about half of this vacant space. So I'm going to put a little bit of yellow and white on my brush. And I'm going to just eyeball halfway between here and here, give myself a little bit of a marker, and do the same thing on the other side. Again, those are my visual stopping points. I want this entire section to have um, a, a variety of shades of these yellow and white. So right now I'm just going to kind of m manipulate my brush a little bit left and right, just almost like dabbing it on here. So that way I can have some darker spots of yellow and some lighter spots of yellow. You could, I suppose, do a dotting technique, but that might make it too in focus. And I'm still looking for this area to look like it's off in the distance. So I want to make sure that it looks blurry. And in order for me to do that, I am kind of mushing my colors together a little bit. And then when I do get up into where it's going to meet the forest, I want those two to look like they belong together, like they're, uh, again, out of focus and kind of fading into the distance. So I'm going to overlap those two colors or those two sections a little bit. But I want to get this 
before I start introducing green to my brush, I want to get this entire area just covered with these varying shades of yellow. So I'm going yellow and white, and I'm not over blending it. I'm just kind of dabbing my brush a little bit here and there just to get some, um, some good soft texture in this distant little meadow. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start without washing my brush, I'm gonna introduce a little, a tiny bit of green onto my brush, so just a little dab of green. And I'm just gonna start almost softly rubbing it up into the forest, something like this. And you can add as much or as little as you want. And I almost wanted to just fade into the forest, so. I might have to, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel here, just so I don't bring it up too, too high. And if you feel like the lightness from your meadow is creeping too much up into your forest, you can always just kind of wipe your brush off on your paper towel to get some of that white off of it. And that's gonna help you to get these two areas to softly blend together without bringing the, the meadow too far up into the forest and vice versa, bringing the forest too far down into the meadow. And I just want these almost like it's a little haze or maybe the, um, the rain is splashing up or maybe there's a little bit of fog back there where the forest meets the meadow. So whatever you have to do to just kind of get these little areas to, again, just kind of fade into one another without making it too distinct of a line. And again, it doesn't have to be straight across, it doesn't have to be perfect, but something nice and soft along that area will work. And then we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your, your meadow perfectly placed and it's fading up into your, into your out of focus forest, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the first layer to our ground. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are brown, green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I want this to look a little bit more in focus, so I'm gonna be using a dotting type technique. I want it to be a little bit darker down at the bottom and as it gets up where it's gonna meet this meadow area, I'm gonna have it um, a little bit more rough rough around the edges so you can you can see the difference between them and it's gonna be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of green and brown on my brush and I'm just gonna start dotting it. I don't want this necessarily to all blend together and look soft like we have the uh, forest and the meadow. So I definitely don't wanna scoop up a big humongous glob of paint but I also don't want to sit in one spot and dab, 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 dab a thousand times in one spot because it will turn into one solid color. So you want to keep moving when you're, when you're doing this step. And right now I'm just kind of alternating my colors. So I started with green and brown, then I picked up a little bit of yellow. Now I'm going back to green. I'm kind of staying down at the bottom to, to start so I can make sure I've got a little bit more darkness down there. And then as I go up towards the top, I will use white at some point, but I like to reserve my reserve the use of the white until I've got the majority of the rest of the area painted. Because once I put that white on my brush, what will happen is it will dilute or mute these other colors that I have if I, if I put it on top of these other colors or mix it within these other colors. So I'm waiting until I have al almost all of this ground covered and then I will start introducing my white in order to get those um, the little tippy tops a little bit brighter. And I want it to be really messy up at the top, especially when it's hitting that meadow because I want it to look nice and natural. So I'm gonna just kind of keep continuing on here and I'm not putting too, too much paint on my brush just so I can control how, how much I can see the difference between these colors. 
and it looks like I'm almost there. And if you have little tiny peekaboo spots of uh, the canvas still showing through on the behind this paint, it's okay at this point because we have a couple more steps that we're going to be doing for the ground. So if you don't cover it a hundred percent, don't panic, don't worry. We'll be adding some additional um, steps to it later. So right now I feel like I'm ready to start adding a bit of white to my brush and without washing it, I just kind of added a little bit of white and I'm just sprinkling in a bit of, bit of I was gonna say sunshine. There is sunshine even though it's raining. <laughs> so we're sprinkling a bit of sunshine on top of these uh, pieces of grass. I have a feeling there's probably a rainbow somewhere too in this, in this landscape that we're just not seeing because we've got rain and sunshine happening. So there's a rainbow somewhere. Um, and then we're gonna switch brushes to our, let's see, we are gonna switch brushes to our Let's switch to our small brush for the next step. So once you get this done, put your large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the outline for our mushrooms, but I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you have your canvas dry. So, you know, you could take an extra long break if you'd like to, or you could, you know, blow or fan it or whatever other method to dry the exterior, but you could utilize my easy method of just taking out a blow dryer and blow drying it. So whatever way you find works best for you, just get your canvas dry if it isn't already. And I'm going to use my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use on this step are black and white. And I'm going to use that just so I have kind of a neutral gray that I can use as a outline and that if I want it darker in one area so you can see it or lighter in another area so you can see it, I can just kind of adjust as I go. You could use a pencil or chalk or whatever method for an outline you'd like. Um, I'm gonna utilize a little bit of water too. So I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna take a little bit of white paint and add some water to it. And then I'll take a touch of black paint and add a little bit of water to it. And I'll just put a little bit of both of those colors on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna guide you into some dots and then we'll connect those dots. And hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have a couple of shapes that resemble mushrooms that will help us along our painting process. So I'm gonna put my small mushroom outline on first because that will help me to guide me into where I want to place the larger one and plus the small one's going to be in front of the larger one. I do know that I want to have my frog over in this area with his head a little bit up into the forest area. And so I want this smaller mushroom to be of kind of equal height to the top of his head or almost to the top of his head and at a little bit of an angle so he can kind of like hang on to it. So I'm gonna go up maybe about an inch above my, where my meadow meets my forest, and I'm about a third from the left of my canvas, and I'm gonna make myself a marker right in through there. Then I'm gonna come down into this region. So this is gonna be maybe about an inch or two above your, your grass, and maybe about a third of the way in from your canvas over here, you can make yourself another marker. I'm going to connect these two markers with a, like a very gentle wavy line, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, outline the top of the mushroom. So I'm going to have it pretty large along the top of it and then it's going to have like a little bit of a resting place for the, um, for the frog's arm to kind of rest on it in through here, something like that. And you can certainly adjust these as you see fit. And then down at the bottom, this is just gonna have a little tiny sliver of the underneath portion of the, of the mushroom that we'll, we'll utilize to show that bottom part. So something like that. And then the top mushroom, or actually let me put the stem on this first. So I want this stem to be pretty wide at the bottom and a little bit more narrow at the top. It's gonna to be about halfway, coming out at kind of midway point of the, um, of the mushroom cap. It's gonna be about an inch wide at the top and then maybe a couple inches at the bottom. So I'm gonna bring this over in this curvy fashion 
to about here. So I'm about an inch, inch and a half above the bottom of my canvas and maybe I would say a little bit to the right of this corner here. So if you go a little bit to the right and down, that'll give you a good spot to stop it. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here, only I'm going to concentrate on making it a little bit wider at the bottom, so something like that. Now I'm going to go up top to create the top mushroom cap. So I'm going to go maybe about an inch and a half to two inches from the left of my canvas. And this is, if this is about the halfway point, I would say this is about halfway um, up or down my canvas. I'm maybe about two to three inches above that. So I'm going to put my little dot in through there. And then I'm going to go way, way over onto this top right hand corner. I'm only about a half of an inch away from the edge of my canvas and I'm maybe about three inches from the top. So that's where I'm going to put my second marker. And this is going to be the same thing with a gentle, long kind of wavy line, something like this. And again, it doesn't have to have much movement in it, just something to give it some nice natural, natural bend to it. I'm going to put the, the top, top part on, and this one's going to be a little bit more um, shapely, I would say, kind of dips a little bit further in the, um, in the center. So I'm going to just bring this up. You want to kind of leave yourself enough space at the top of the canvas to allow for the, uh, the illusion or the rain that we're going to be having. So you don't necessarily want this to go too, too high up uh, towards the top of your canvas. So just kind of plan for that. This is all, I have this maybe about two inches in um, thickness, I would say, is my best math gauge for that. And then I need an underside to it. And this might be a little bit more narrow than the top, but I, I want, we're gonna be seeing more of the underside of this one than we did this one. So this is gonna go something, I would say, let's go maybe bring it down like this and maybe a little up like this and then back down with a little bit of a scoop something like that looks a little bit like lips right now <laughs> as i'm as i'm looking at my outline but <laughs> you can maybe maybe yours uh, totally looks like lips, especially we're going to have a red cap on it too, so it's going to really look like lips in a couple minutes. All right, so, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stem on it, but I want it the stem to be placed in a distinct place underneath or behind this one. So I'm actually going to work on the bottom part of my stem first. I'm going to come over to the right of uh, this stem, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, and I'm just gonna kind of come down with a little bit of a wave and kick it out a little bit further at the bottom. And then I'm gonna do uh, kind of a opposite as if this is gonna be turning up that, that way a little bit. So I'm gonna come over to the left, maybe about an inch in through here, and I want it to come into the stem somewhere around, I would say about there. So this, the smaller one's gonna be in front of the bigger one. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and finish the top part of the stem. So you want to make sure that it kind of makes sense for it. it's going to be behind here. So maybe somewhere about here. And then if you just kind of travel up in through here, maybe somewhere about here. And then I'm just going to bring it up into the center of my, of my mushroom cap and make it a little bit more slender up at the top. Something like that. And that's all we're gonna do for this step. We are gonna utilize our medium brush for the next step so you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the base coat for the mushrooms. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using red, black, brown, and white. So I'm going to be first doing the top part of the caps with red paint. There is no fancy brush stroke involved here. The only thing that I do recommend is you cover your outlines. You may still be able to see through your paint at this point. It's going to be, if red is very translucent, so you'll still be able to see your outlines, but that's okay because we have many more steps to go, but you want to start the covering process on this step. 
So I'm just putting a good amount of red. You can use a lot, you can use a little, whatever works for you. I'm using a good amount here, so I have good coverage. Even though red is see-through, the more you put, the less you'll see through it. <laughs> um, so I'm just kind of loading this on so we have a good coverage. We will be um, have, making sure it's dry before we do a second layer on it or the, the future steps. So you load it on if you want to. And then I'm going to do this top. I'm going to move down to the bottom top and then we'll do the undersides and then we're going to do the stems. So this is all just a base coat which is going to provide us with a wonderful starting point to to color these in a realistic way with lots and lots of dimension to them. When I'm doing stuff like this, my building process is a very simple one and it's usually just the I start with the basic color that I see in that particular shape, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. So the basic color that I see or the most dominant color that I see in these mushrooms on the cap part is, is red. So that's gonna be the, the dominant or the, the base coat that I choose because everything is gonna be a shade of that red to create the dimension of it. So now that I've got this, the red on there, I'm gonna wash and dry my medium brush and I'm gonna go in and do the undersides of the mushrooms. So I want this to be pretty dark because it's gonna be in the shadows. So I am loading my brush with black, brown, and white all at the same time. And I am not looking for anything that is perfect at this point. I want it to just be a dark grayish brown type color. We will be adding the little details and the dimension on the, on the next pass through on it. But if you, if you feel that you, you want to you know, have dimension on one pass. You could certainly make it a little bit darker up at the top and maybe a little bit lighter as you're going down towards the bottom. But again, it's not super necessary at this point because we're gonna be making sure that, that that happens during the next step. So again, I'm not doing any fancy brush stroke here, just making sure that I have a nice coat on here and that I am covering my outlines at least enough for me to, I'll be able to know where the edge is. Like right now, I'm just lightening this up so I don't lose the, the um, guide that that outline provides for me. So I did lighten this up a little bit so I can make sure that I know where the edge of that section is. I've got that one done. I'm going to go ahead and move to the small one and it's small so it doesn't take much paint or much effort in through here. So just load my brush back up with the black, brown, and white. Make sure I've got this entire area covered. I'm going right up to the, the cap part or the red part of it and on top, going on top of my, my outline that I created a moment ago, making sure I go all the way to the little corners here. And then the last section that I have is the stems. So the only trick here is making sure you can still see this front stem in front of the back stem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my back stem first and then I will put my front stem on and the only thing that I need to make sure is that one is a little bit lighter or darker than the other where they touch. So that way I can see the difference between the two. So I'm gonna have these more on the, I would say, lighter browner side than I had in through here. So I added white and brown to my dirty brush. And I'm just going to start adding the, the color on here. So I, it can, it's gonna naturally be darker up at the top. So you can always just use the darker tones that are on your brush to start. And then just keep picking up maybe white and brown as you go down the stem and it'll get a little bit lighter as it starts emerging from underneath the, the 
the shadow of the mushroom cap. And I'm bringing this right down to the top of this one. And if you bump into it a little bit by accident, don't worry, because again, this is just, this is just our first pass on it. So just know that you'll have that opportunity to make any little bits of corrections as we go um, into the next phase of this, of this object. So again, I'm just kind of adding a little bit to the sides here. I'm reloading my brush with just brown and white to get this to finish up this section. When you get down to where it meets the grass, don't worry about that being perfect. You actually want it to be on the messier side so that way it looks like some natural grass. And again, when you get up to this part where the, where the stem meets the uh, mushroom cap, you just need them to be of a different tone from one another. So I'm doing my stem a little bit lighter so you can see it next to the mushroom cap itself. And again, I'm just loading my brush with white and brown as I'm finishing up this one little section. And then as I go into the stem for the front mushroom, I'll probably go even lighter. I'm just gonna continue to load my brush with brown and white so it gets more on a warmer and brighter kind of natural tone. And so you'll be able to see it in front of the back one. So if your brush is still a little bit, or your paint is coming off a little bit darker than you want to, you could always just wipe your brush off on your paper towel and just pick up a little bit of white instead of the combination of the two. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more brown as I get up towards the top of this mushroom cap. And again, I just wanna make sure that I still have that visual information that one of these is in front of the other one. I will be adding more dimension to it later, but this is just gonna be my base coat. And then we are going to be switching back to our small brush. So once you've got the base coat, on your mushrooms, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base, the outline and the base coat for our frog. We're gonna be using our small brush, and the colors that we're using are green, brown, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do a basic kind of shape for the body, and then we'll put on, you know, bubbles for the eyes and a couple of little arms and legs too. And I, we're just gonna be doing a basic color similar to what we've done um, on the other objects to give us that foundation to build all of the realistic form and highlights and shadows on top of it. So I'm going to be using my small brush and green and brown on my brush at the same time for the initial part of the body. I'm gonna give you a couple of markers, and again, we'll just connect those markers and hopefully we'll have something that looks like a little bit of a froggy. So the top of the head between the eyes, I'm gonna have right in this vicinity. So this is maybe about a quarter of the way over my canvas, and it's almost to the height of my small mushroom. So that's where I'm gonna kind of start the top of my frog head just so you know where my brush is gonna be traveling. I'm gonna have where the mouth is gonna go is gonna be somewhere in this vicinity. So a little bit lower than here and pretty close to the edge of my um, mushroom. Then the bottom part where his belly and all the other good stuff is gonna connect with his legs and stuff is gonna be somewhere in this vicinity. So this is maybe almost halfway up my land or a little bit higher than that and maybe a little bit to the right of the top of his head. So if you go to the right of the top of the head maybe by about an inch travel down into your your ground maybe about an inch inch and a half that'll be about where the bottom of this shape is going to go and then mid back I've got about halfway into my meadow and it's maybe about two inches away from the edge of my canvas. So somewhere about here. So I've got four markers. I'm gonna make myself a shape that's kind of like a long, I'm gonna call it like a bean of sorts. And again, I'm just ha I have green and brown on my brush at the same time. So this is all gonna have curves to it. So I'm starting the top of my head 
I'm going to go down. Here's where I'm going to hit the where the little froggy mouth is going to go. And then this is going to come along the edge of my mushroom somewhere in through here and kind of just travel down towards this area. Maybe it's got a little froggy belly somewhere in through here. And then over on this right side, this is going to be his back. So I want to make sure the head has enough shape. I'm going to just curve this and make sure that I meet my mark over here. And then I'm just reloading my brush with my green and my brown and meeting that there. I'm going to have my little froggy having a little bump on his back. So I'm going to put that bump somewhere naturally, I would say, um, something like that. Maybe it's a little like wart kind of thing or I don't know. Lots of frogs have bumps on them. <laughs> and then I'm just going to color this in with green and brown. So I'm not doing anything fancy here. Just getting a full coat in through here. I'm actually using quite a bit of paint. I'm not terribly concerned about how beautiful this looks right now. I'm just getting the, the color on here. So I have, a, again, a base coat for everything else that I want to do with them. And once I've got this on, we're going to add a little bit of white to the equation and we'll put ourselves a couple of eyes, arms, and legs on. So we've got our green and our brown just finishing coloring in this section in through here. So in order for me to be able to decipher the um, different parts of the body and not get them confused throughout this process. The, uh, the other pieces I'm going to be doing with a little bit lighter of a color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start using white on my brush as well. So now I'm using green, brown, and white. So I have three colors on my brush right now. I'm going to put a couple of eyes in place. So my first eye I'm going to have is going to be I would say maybe about a half of an inch to an inch up the nose like this and it's going to come not quite to the crest of the head but maybe just shy of it and these are really big buggy frog eyes so you can make them quite large. Don't be shy with the size that you're making the eyes. So something like that will give me that eye. That one's on the far side of the head. The next one I'm going to put on this side of the head that's going to be closer to us. So I've got it starting maybe about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch away from that one. And I don't want it quite as tall as this one in height because the frog is at an angle. So it actually is not going to come much higher than the head itself. So it's going to be somewhere in this vicinity and it's going to appear larger than the other one again because it's closer to us. So I'm going to put this somewhere I would say in through here. So it's probably about an inch to an inch and a half wide and tall and it's a big circle. And if you end up making it too big, that's okay. We can make it adjust the size as we go through the detail process. So something like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I need myself a couple of legs so again, I'm just reloading my brush with green, yellow, or excuse me, green, brown, and white. I want to have the far leg is going to be it within the meadow a little bit. So I'm going to have the meeting point where the back leg kind of comes out of is going to be right about in through here. And the top part is going to be just where it crests into the meadow a little bit, something like that. And it's going to be just a kind of a skinny, um, long oval that juts out from the side of his body, something like this, and just comes back in through here. And again, you want to make sure that you can see the difference so you don't get confused later as to what's the belly and what's the leg. So I'm just doing a nice, long, narrow leg in through there. I've got to put a little bit of a foot on here. So I'm going to have this foot coming out in through here with a couple of cute little frog toes. And don't 
Again, don't worry about the detail of the toes. We'll add that later. My toes are gonna come farther out than the knee itself. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white so you have an easier time seeing this at this point. So I'm gonna have, I'm having three toes. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think there might be four toes total, but uh, from this angle, I think you'd only be able to see three of them. I could be not totally 100% accurate, but I'm close, I think. Close enough to sell the story. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put, I need a leg over here, so brown, green, and white. This leg is gonna come out from here. We're gonna have a knee right in through here. And then his, his leg is gonna meet his foot, which is gonna be pretty long like this. So you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna put a little knee that's not gonna come any farther than my belly. So it's gonna, that's gonna be his knee, something like that. Then it's gonna wrap around. This is gonna be his leg coming back here. I'm gonna put the, the back of the leg is gonna be farther than this, farther than his uh, frog bump on his back. So about in through here, I think would be a pretty good spot. That's his leg. And then I need his foot to come out. So I'm just reloading my brush here. So I'm gonna have his foot coming out in this direction and I'm gonna have one toe here. Let me put a little more white on my brush so you can see it. One toe here. I'm gonna have another toe. They have really long toes. They need these long toes with the little suction cups on top of them to climb and jump on things. And I've got another toe maybe coming down in through here and then a fourth toe we're going to make this one pretty long this one's going out in through here yeah that's looking cute because he's going to have the little suction cups on the ends of them too so that's going to be my little leg now i need some arms so brown green and yellow i'm going to do my far arm first and really all i'm going to do on this one, I'm gonna just see his hand. So I have brown, green, and white on my brush, and I'm gonna have just a couple of fingers. I've got one in through here, maybe one in through here, and again, we will put all the little fun, froggy suction cup details on them in a little bit. One in through here. I gotta get it to connect to the body though, so just make sure that you get it to connect to the body somehow back there. And then I'm gonna have the other one, he needs to have his second arm, is going to be, actually, I'm gonna, we're gonna, before we do that arm, I wanna kinda give a separating line between, this frog is gonna have two colors, it's gonna have green on one side and orange on the other, so let's do that separating line and that'll tell us where we can put our arm. So this is gonna be the mouth, it's gonna be a line kind of down the center of him. It's gonna start at the mouth. It's gonna travel down uh, around this region. It's gonna curve and then come back down near where the rear end is, the rear end. Frogs have rear ends. So <laughs> something like this. I've got my lighter color on so I can, I can see what color it is happening or I can see the line that I'm making and I'm gonna curve around in through here and then I'm gonna bring this just kind of down the back in through here. And it's, I'm just doing a light sketchy line so I have that information. Now I can see where I wanna put my arm. I'm gonna put my arm almost right below that eye, somewhere in this vicinity, and the elbow, so it's gonna come out of his body in through here. The elbow is gonna come, I need a little bit more white so you can see it. The elbow is gonna come back down in through here. And then his, whoops, his arm is going to come up. His wrist is going to meet the, the mushroom. So I'm going to have it something like this. And you can manipulate it a little bit. These arms, they just almost, this, they just kind of jut out of the, the shoulder. They have the most interesting joint system. I, I can't I can't even explain it. It's a little bit different than the human body. So I'm gonna have one of his 
fingers right here. I'm going to have, this is his whole hand. I'm going to have it crossing over this little spot here. He's got one finger. He's going to have a little bit of some webby stuff happening with his suction cup fingers. One, two. We've got a third one in through here. And I think that's going to do it. We've got four fingers. We've got two arms. We've got two legs. I think we're good. So we are going to be, let's see, we're going to switch back to the medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your frog outline on here and colored in for the first layer, you can wash or put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing the top part of our mushroom cap. So this is going to be the red areas. I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using red, yellow, white, and I might use a little black or brown too, but definitely red, yellow, and white. So how I'm going to do this is I am loading my brush with white and yellow to start. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a bright lip along the edges of them and I'm going to start my highlight process. So for me, my sun is up top left. So all my brightest areas are going to be on the top and to the left. But I'm going to start with, I have yellow and white on my brush and I'm just kind of going along the edge, something like this. And I'm going to do the same thing down on this one, a little bit along that edge. I'm going to now add some red paint to my brush without washing it. And I'm going to start adding this highlight over on the top left. So top left, a little bit of highlight, adding a little bit more red and yellow. So I like using yellow when I'm doing highlights on red because I know that if I just used red and white, I, it would end up really pink on me. And I don't necessarily want it to go pink. So the yellow helps to counteract that. Right now I'm just blending this, this yellow um, little lip line, not like lips on a person, but lip on the, <laughs> the mushroom cap in with the red that is next to it. So I'm gonna do kind of do the same thing down in through here, picking up some more red just to get this all to blend nicely together getting a little bit more of that highlight up here on the top i don't have a ton of highlight down on this bottom one because it might be a little bit under the the shadow of the mushroom above it but you can put as much as you'd like it'll tell the story of how bright it is out or not and then I'm just going to continue to pick up some red paint to make sure that I have a nice full coat on here. And then once I've got this highlight and shape put into the mushroom cap or the top part of the mushroom cap, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put the little white, um, little, I don't even know what to call them, the the bumpy parts. <laughs> this is a, a traditional red mushroom. I don't know the, the proper name of it, but it, the, whenever I see red mushrooms, they always have little white bumpy things <laughs> on the top of them. So I'm going to put some of those on there. Not really quite sure what the, the proper name of them is, but I'm going to put some on there. <laughs> so if you wanted to, you could also incorporate a little bit of brown over on that right hand side. If you wanted yours to look like it was a little bit more shadowed over on that right hand side you could certainly add a touch of brown to it but I'm thinking that this is looking pretty good I've got some good highlight over here on the left hand side and a little bit of texture which is always super cool to me um, and then once I've got that on there I'm just gonna pick up a time I'm not washing my brush I just picked up a tiny bit of white paint and I'm gonna add a variety of different um, pock marks, I guess, would be a good way to describe them. They can be of different sizes and shapes. Maybe you wiggle your brush a little bit just to get the variety of shapes. You can have them hev more heavy at the top. You can have them kind of popping out 
of the top because they're three-dimensional so they they have that little bit of uh, texture to them and they might have some height to them so you could certainly do that all along the top and then I'll do a couple on here and some of them have thousands and some of them have just a few you could really you know have fun with the number of little white dots you have and once I have them on here, I've got my little fingers to contend with. So we're going to pretend like there's not too many in this area. <laughs> Once I've got my little white marks, what I think I'm going to do, just so they look a little bit more three-dimensional, I'm going to wipe my brush off on, on my paper towel. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and do maybe, maybe brown and black and do a tiny bit of a shadow on the bottom right uh, oh yeah, that works. It's a tiny bit of a little shadow on the bottom right of some of these. That'll make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. So if you want yours to have that bit of, you know, m more height and more authenticity, you can add this tiny bit of a shadow on the bottom right and if you're running into wet white paint and and you're not able to work around it either blow dry it or just give it a couple minutes and it will dry and you'll be able to add those those little bits of, of shadows and then we're going to utilize this same brush for the next step so once you've got your tops of your mushroom caps all nice and detailed and you've got the highlight and your little bumpy parts on there you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're finishing the underneath parts of the mushroom caps as well as the stems so i'm using my medium brush and the colors i'm using are black brown and white so how i'm going to do this is the underneath part almost looks like louvers or um, little fabric. <laughs> I don't know what else to, to call it. I'm going to make it stripey, <laughs> but I don't know what visual reference to give you other than it looks like the underneath of a mushroom. <laughs> um, it's all going to come out. All my little stripes are going to come out from this center part and they're going to kind of creep their way up towards this edge in through here. So they're all going to kind of take on that same curve. My light source is coming from over here, which would tell me that the left side over here would kind of be the darkest because it's the it's the closest underneath here. So it's going to be a little bit darker here, a little bit lighter here. It's going to be pretty dark underneath here as well. And then same thing for under here. I'm going to have my starting point here. It's going to kind of come out in these little stripes. And then when I go to do the stem, if my light is over here, the right side underneath here will be a little bit darker. And the right side underneath here will be a little bit darker. And then this um, stem will cast a shadow on this stem here. So when I'm doing here and here, I'll probably use a good amount of paint on my brush. And then when I'm doing the stems, I won't use much paint, just in case I forget to tell you that while I'm, while I'm doing it. So I'm going to load my brush first with black and brown. And I'm going to start in my darker areas and kind of work my way to my lighter areas. So I know that I want this area over here to be pretty darn dark. So I really want to emphasize the shadow underneath this little um, edge here. So I've got that going on. Now I'm gonna come over into this area with my black and brown that's still on my brush and bring it up in the direction that I feel that these stripes would be traveling. So oh, I need, need a little bit more black on my brush there. Something like this. And then as I feel like I've got enough of the, the darker areas in through there. And you can tell I'm not covering the whole thing. I want this to look like there's uh, some sort of striped type texture, some high, high spots and low spots. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of white, black, and brown. So now I have all three colors on my brush. 
And now I'm going to start putting in some of the lighter type of um, stripes, for lack of a better terminology, because <laughs> I clearly don't have the proper terminology for, for this um, area underneath the mushroom. And you can see I'm just kind of building my little lighter stripes in the direction that, that they're kind of coming out of the, of the center area. And I'm not pressing hard at this point. I feel like that center area got a little bit light on me, so I'm just picking up a little bit of the darker colors. And I think I want that right area to be a little bit lighter, so I'm picking up a little bit more brown and white. So you can continue to just adjust this until you feel that you have as much of the illusion as you as you desire and I think I think that's pretty good for me and through there now I'm going to go ahead and work on the stem portion of this one so I'm going to I have black and brown on my brush right now I want to make sure it's nice and dark right on this right hand side and I'm not using a lot of paint at all because we have a good base already on the on the stem itself. So really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm in essence kind of adding the highlights and the shadows to these to both of these areas of the stems and the underside of the um, of the cap. I'm going to add a little bit of white and brown over there on the left-hand side of this stem in through here just to get that bit of um, whatever little bit of light might be captured here, making sure it looks nice and natural as it hits the top of that mushroom. You don't want it to look like you're painting around this red section, so just make sure that you've got that nice and, and smooth in through there. And if you want more brown, add more brown. The brown is definitely going to make it look all very natural. So the more brown you can have in it, the more the more natural it will look. So if you feel like it's going too gray on you, definitely just back off on the black and add a bit more of the of the brown. That will help you to make it look a little bit more natural. So I've got that pretty good. I'm going to move down it maybe maybe just a little bit lighter in here. I feel like that's a little bit too dark. And of course, this is a, a building process. You can so you can see from how I go about it. Sometimes I I sit and work on a on an area a little bit longer than I probably should have or probably needed to. But that's just the joys of painting. Sometimes it it gets away from you and you just can't stop. So I'm going to move down to this bottom area down here. And again, I don't need much. I just want to make sure that I've got my highlights and my shadows and I've got good good dimension throughout it so I definitely want to make sure that I've got this this back one looking like it has some light on it so I'm making it have a little bit of light and you you want to make sure this bottom part looks like it meet matches the top part so if one of them is lighter or darker than the other one in this meeting point, you just want to make sure that you make them look like they belong together. So that might take a, a second just to to tweak the the tonal value or whatever colors you've used on them. And then once I've got this larger one done, then I'll start tweaking the smaller one. And of course, the smaller one won't take as long because it's not as big. But I definitely want to make sure that these two look like they belong before I before I go on to the next um, one. And then I know that this one's going to have a little bit of a shadow cast from this one, but I definitely want to make sure that I it's got some lightness to it as well. So I'm going to just add a little bit more brown in through this area. This is going to be part of my shadow that I'm going to do, but just making sure it again looks like it belongs with that top portion. And it's looking pretty good to me. So I am going to, let me just add a tiny bit more shadow underneath here. Yeah, there we go. Because I want this to look like it's being shadowed by this front one a little bit. That looks good. And that's looking good. Maybe a touch of shadow over here on this right hand side. 
just again give, making sure it's got enough dimension and then once I've got this all nice, oh, that made it too light. Once I've got this nice, yeah, there we go. Nice and colored. I'll start working on that front one. There we go. We're getting it now. Yeah, perfect. Well, not perfect, but pretty good. So I'm gonna start working on this one. I'm adding some white to my brush to make sure this to me looks like it would be the, the lightest area right in through here. So I've got some lightness going on in through here. I'll hit this underside in just a second. I was feeling this highlight needed to be done right now. So I just went for it. So you can do some of these things a little bit out of you know order. They don't have to go in a perfect, perfect order. As long as you've got all the pieces of the puzzle in there, you can certainly manip manipulate the order of execution on them. So that's good. Now I'm going to put my little stripes underneath. So again, I want to start with a little bit of black and brown just to make sure I have this firm um, kind of dimensional element underneath here. We've got that going on and then they're all going to come out from from this little center point in through here. So I'm going to make that the darkest and then just kind of pull these out almost like little feathers I would say <laughs> probably still not the best analogy but it works in my little head and then once I've got enough of the darker ones now I'm just going to pick up a little bit of brown and white maybe a little bit of black still is on my brush too but I, I'm just really looking to give it a little bit of an illusion that there's these little pieces underneath that have this texture to them and then I need that shadow on the underneath the cap right here on this right hand side so I have that black and brown on my brush and again you don't need much paint on your brush at all so I keep wiping mine off on my paper towel if you hear it um, making some noise underneath the underneath the view so that's what I'm doing right here and then I'm just going to kind of blend this in a little bit and then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step so once you've got your undersides of your um, mushroom caps as well as your stems all nice and developed you can put your medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our frog eyes. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using brown, black, white, maybe a little green. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first put the, um, I guess I'm gonna call it the slit part of the eye on so it gives it a second to dry. So these particular eyes to me look like they have almost horizontal ovals with points on the end. So, and they're right about the middle of the eye. So I'm gonna have this one coming something, and you don't have to put it all the way to the edge of the eye. I'm gonna put it a little bit away. So something like this and like this. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but this is where I'm going to be starting. I'm not using a lot of paint. I just want to get it on there. On the other eye, there, we're just going to be seeing a little portion of the uh, buggy part. <laughs> the other, we're also going to be seeing the, like the skin part on the back side. So I'm going to go about halfway into the eye, oh, I have a little hairy thing on the end of my brush, so bear with me for a second. I'm just adding a touch of water to my brush. That will help me to get it nice and pointy. That will hopefully work, and if not, I'll have a little bit bigger of an eye than I expected. So I've got this, and I'm gonna just add a little kind of sliver in through here, and it's gonna go all the way to the edge of the eye. I want it at about the same height as this one is if it was at you know at a diagonal like that. Now without washing my brush 
I'm going to add a little bit of brown to it. So I have black and brown on my brush and I'm going to give myself like a shadowed exterior for these eyes in the skin portion of the frog. So I'm doing this with black and brown on my brush and I'm really kind of doing a light sketchy type of a line and I'm almost bringing it down to where the mouth is. I'm going to utilize this black and brown on my brush to separate the skin from the eyeball part on this one. So I'm going to start somewhere about middle of the, the top of the eye and through here and bring this just down like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm just going to pick up brown paint and I'm going to put a like a shadow around the outside of the eye like this and I'm going to do the same thing on this underside of this one. So this is just brown on my brush right now, like this. Now I'm gonna, without washing my brush, I'm adding green to it. So right now I have brown and green on my brush and I'm gonna put some of the frog skin on this back part over here. So just brown and green will work this out for you. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash my brush at this point. So I'm washing my brush, drying it on my paper towel, and I'm going to add white paint to my brush. So I have white paint on my brush right now. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding like the, the highlight to the eyes. So I'm going to start up here at the top with just white paint on my brush. And this, when you get to this part, you'll want to make sure that your black is dry and I can see that my black is dry so I'm not running any risk of it smearing on me but you'll want to make sure that yours is dry and I'm just kind of lightly pulling this into the rest of the eye. You can even go in front of that black part a little bit and if you feel you want it to blend in with the uh, main portion of the eye a little bit more you can always pick up some of those original colors which were brown green and white and you can get it to blend in with the rest of the eye a little bit more as well so you can really tweak the intensity of that brightness uh, on the top of the eye to your desired level some people would want it really bright 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 and glossy looking other people might want it a little bit more on the subtle side so you can really get that to be it wherever your wherever your comfort zone lies and if you want you know to tweak your little shadows at all that's perfectly fine as well and then I'm going to do the same thing over on the left eye I'm picking up some white paint and I'm adding the glossy or the the shiny part and this one's not only going to go on the eyeball but I'm also going to have a little highlight on the top of the of the skin part as well so just white paint right now and I'm just bringing it down in these little streaks in front of the um, eye part and then I'm just going to bring it down a little bit down the skin and then just fade it down into the Oh, the, almost the bridge of the nose, but we'll, we're going to tackle that in a minute. And that's all I'm going to do for the eyes. Again, you can sit and tweak them all you want, uh, but we are going to be using the small brush for the next step. So once you get your eyes done, you can wash and dry your small brush. Get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting the green parts on the frog. So this is going to be this back area as well as a little bit of his arm and a little bit of his leg. So I'm using my small brush. The colors I'm using are green, brown, and white. And I'll be kind of alternating those based on where I want it to be a little bit darker for it, for it to be shadowed like down by the rear end back here or lighter up on the nose where I want there to be some highlights on it. So I'm just starting with some green and brown on my brush just to make sure that I have a good texture. I'm not, I'm actually 
going to be using like a little circular motion with my brush because I want it to look like maybe there's some lumps and bumps on his on his little frog skin. So I'm just utilizing almost like a dotting or a, a little circular type technique so I can get rid of the um, any evidence of brush strokes from the prior step and I can give it this nice realistic kind of texture to it and you can when you get on underneath the eye you can certainly add a little bit of the green and the brown in with that shadowy part that we put but as I move towards the top of the nose that's where I'm going to be using more green so it can get a little bit brighter right now I have not utilized any uh, white I'm just using the green and the brown to start and then when I feel the I'm ready to add a little bit of the lighter tones that's when I'll start adding some white I want I'm gonna have some on the nose in a minute but I want to make sure that green is green enough underneath there before I start adding the um, the highlights so to speak so I'm gonna add some green onto my forearm in through here a little bit of green in through here and again you can have yours as green or as brown as you want wherever your visual preference is is awesome this is going to also have some orange on it later maybe this goes a little bit up into the arm i'm going to have the front part of this leg also green and what i noticed um, when i was looking at various frogs is the the colors just kind of fade from one area into the next so you don't need distinct sections of colors sure i've got you know the green is separated from the orange but like on the arm the green is going to kind of fade into the orange same thing with under this belly where the leg is it's going to kind of fade into the into the belly a little bit the leg itself i'm going pretty green on this not much brown on my brush right now there's going to be some orange kind of highlights to it as well so that's looking pretty good i want to add a nice highlight on the nose so i'm just picking up some white paint and i'm going to add myself a little a little pop of a, of a highlight on, on the nose maybe a little bit on the forehead and once we put all the pieces in, in, into place all these little marks that we're making will make a whole lot of sense because we're we're adding these dimensional elements kind of on a section by section basis uh, for this particular painting which is great it's kind of a, a nice quick way to do it but as you're doing it it's like hmm, that looks interesting in that direction but once we've got everything in the um, in the surrounding areas it will make a whole lot of sense so I think I've got these areas just the way that I want them I'm going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your green areas on here, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the orange areas on our frog. So I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are yellow, orange, and white. And if I feel that I need to go into any brown or green, I'll let you know, but it's predominantly yellow, orange, and white. So I'm gonna start with yellow and white on my brush and I am giving myself a couple of strategically bright spots. One of them is gonna be this separating area from the um, green area to the, to the orange area. So this can be around that mouth. And again, you can have yours as bright as you want. You could use more white onto yours. I'm using both the colors at the same time on my brush so it has a nice vibrancy and a real nice natural way of getting lighter and darker in various spots all on its own without me having to do too much work. I'm also going to do this same yellow and white combination on like the little um, suction cups and stuff so I know that it's nice and vibrant so I'm going to just kind of I might need a couple of layers so I'm just going to add my little suction cups right now 
And then if I need to add another layer to them in a minute, I will. So just adding my little suction cups. <laughs> so yellow and white are going on my brush. And these ones down here, I'm probably going to make a little bit darker um, with the orange in a minute, but I just kind of want to get them started with this nice um, light base so they can have some good vibrancy to them. So little suction cups, yellow and white. I'm going to also do yellow and white as um, the starting point for this leg over here because I want it to be really nice and kind of vibrant like it's catching the light from the other side of the mushroom. So this is probably going to be the, the brightest little area in through here. I'll put some orange on it in a second, but just going to kind of start with that. I'm also going to do the same with a couple of areas on my leg to separate my like my knee from the from the rest of the area so a little brightness there a little separating line there this is going to tell you that here's the start of his foot so something like that oh i want a little bright extra brightness on where the arm comes out of the body so i'm going to put a little extra extra brightness in through here so now that i've got my my great bright starting points i'm really going to kind of at this point load my brush with some without washing it with some of that orange paint and this is really nice and translucent but it's going to give me some great color on top of that base that we have so i'm starting with my hands i'm giving some of that orange and whatever remnants of the yellow and white that I had on my on my brush. And if I feel that these go too vibrant, I can always add a little bit of brown on them. But right now I'm just kind of adding this bit of, um, of brightness to it with the orange. I'm getting it to blend into that wrist in through there. I'm gonna get it to go in underneath the chin in a minute. But let me get this, this arm started over here because I know I still have a good amount of white on my brush which I want this area to be a little bit brighter than underneath here. So I'm utilizing that brightness right there. I also know that I want this to be really bright in through here. So I'm utilizing the little bit of white that I have left on my brush. Now I'm gonna pick up some more of that orange and really these undersides of the legs are what's gonna be orange. The feet are orange, the hands are orange, the underside of the belly is orange. But again, you can have as much fun with this as you want. Maybe you want yours to be more on the greener side. So feel free to tweak this whatever way that you want. This is, it's a, it's based off of a real frog, but it's definitely a looser interpretation. <laughs> I like to have fun when I'm doing these type of character animals because I, I, I like them to kind of take them where, wherever they want to be, wherever they want to go. So if I feel like I want it to be a little bit brighter, or a little bit less uh, realistic, I'm going to just take it there. That's, that's the right that I have as a, as a painter. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel right now. I'm going to pick up more of that orange and a little bit of brown as well, just so I can get this underside to be not as bright as the rest and you can really utilize a you know that dotting type brush stroke you could do little swirls you might need or want more than one layer maybe you use the orange with a little bit of yellow as well and change the tone of this as it goes through the area of the belly i'm going to be bringing it all the way to that line that I created with the yellow and white. So that's going to be the area where it separates into the, the green color. And again, I'm just right now kind of using orange, yellow, and brown as my, as my colors here. And because I have that darker base, it's going to add a really nice natural effect to it, especially because these colors are translucent so as they dry they will take on the colors that are underneath them so you'll be able to to detect that that warmth from the brown that's underneath it 
So once you've got this color on here, you can, you know, tweak it as you, as you see fit. We do have um, another tiny little step with our shadows that we're going to do in a second on the frog. So that'll help to bring um, all of these pieces to, to life. But right now I'm just kind of adding, making sure I've got as much intensity on my, on my little suction cups that I want and on the tops of my hands. And we're going to use the small brush for the next step as well. So once you've got your cute little orange sections on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding shadows underneath our frog and and our frog pieces. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm using black and brown, and this is gonna be underneath his hands, maybe a little underneath his arm, under his belly, under his feet. We just gotta ground them, make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I'm using black and brown. You can use any combination thereof. Uh, you just want to, if you're go in a in a lighter area, you can probably get away with just brown. If you're in a darker area, you'll probably want to use a little bit more black. And wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. So I definitely know that my light source is over here. I've got some big mushrooms that are casting a shadow upon them. So I need my shadows in the bottom right hand side. So I've got black and brown on my brush. I'm going to give myself some shadow underneath this little area, I need a little bit more paint on my brush and you can always utilize a touch of water too on your brush that will help to um, get you more fluid kind of lines underneath his toes. So this is where if you wanted um, some, the illusion of web, uh, webs between the toes, you could do a little like curved line between those toes and that's gonna give the illusion that there's a little web even though we haven't really created one. <laughs> that is just a quick way to give that the, the viewer the information that there might in fact be a little bit of a web. I need a little shadow underneath his bum back here. So I'm gonna put one something like this. I'm gonna put a bigger shadow on the ground itself from the mushroom um, in a minute. But right now I am just working on my shadows for the frog. So if that helps you out any, I might have a tiny bit of a shadow in through here, maybe not much, just to separate that leg from the, from the foot part or the ankle part, whatever that is. I'm gonna have a little shadow underneath his belly. And if you do too much and you're like, oh no, I, you know, I. I've put too much, it, it's too dark. You can always bring back some of those original colors. I'm gonna put one underneath this area in through here, cause I totally think that there would be a little shadow under there. I need some underneath this foot too. So something like that. If I want my illusion of a web, I'm just gonna give a little kind of curved line between those two and then just give my shadow underneath here. That one I probably wouldn't see the web. Let's see, where else? I'm gonna need some underneath this arm in through here. So this is gonna be back behind this elbow and then underneath here. And this could be a shadow on the arm or on the body. So you might even have a combination of both. Maybe you have a little bit on the body right there, and then maybe you put a touch on the underside of the arm itself. So you could have it in both areas. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move up into the hand. So this is gonna, again, I'm gonna have a little bit of a web. I'm gonna put my shadow underneath, a little bit of a web, shadow underneath. And this could be utilized to shape the fingers a little bit. If you wanted to add a little bit more, um, you know, of a realistic look with like knuckles and stuff, you could certainly utilize this step to 
to do that. But again, I'm giving it a nice painterly, just fun interpretation here. So I'm going to add that little shadow there, little shadow here, little shadow here, little shadow there. <laughs> so that looks pretty good to me. And I think, um, I don't, I don't think I need maybe a little bit underneath here, this back elbow. And then we're going to actually switch to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows for your frog, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing the ground. So this is gonna include shadows of the mushroom and then little pops of grass on top of those shadows. So I'm gonna be using my bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, green, yellow, and white. So I'm gonna do my shadow first and I'm gonna do very little bit of paint. So I'm just tiny touching, if I can find some, some clean brown here, just a teeny tiny bit of brown paint and just a teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna just rub it like it's a, almost like a dry brush kind of type, type technique, right up kind of close to the bottom of the mushroom, something like this. And then I can also utilize, I just dipped my brush a little bit in my water just so I can spread this out a little bit further so it's not so solid of a color. So you can utilize that as well. You can go right up this corner of the mushroom a little bit, make it nice and messy down there. I'm gonna put just a teeny bit of shadow in the grass over here. I have hardly any paint on my brush right now. I want some of this shadow to be carried over, I need a little more paint, um, to be carried over into this area and kind of surrounding my little frog guy over here. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got some of this shadow in through here. And you don't want it to look like you're painting around the frog, so just make sure that you bring it right up to the edge. And if you bump into it and if you need to do a little correction on your frog in a minute, don't worry about it. You can certainly, you can certainly um, handle that part. And then I'm gonna go behind the frog a little bit because I feel that the, um, the mushroom would be casting a big shadow on the ground. So think of this as the shadow that the mushroom is casting on the ground. So something like this, and I want it to be translucent so you can see the ground underneath it. So that's why I'm using this type of dry brush kind of technique. And then once I have this on here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of green, yellow, and white on my big brush, just on the end of it. And I'm gonna give myself some little pieces of grass coming up in front. And just to put it a little bit more in focus, this area of the canvas, to make it feel like this is really nice and close to us. And you can utilize just the corner of your brush and if this brush is not the right one for you, you can certainly utilize your medium, your medium brush to come up with the, the same type effect. You don't want it too, too bright. This is just a nice subtle detail that is gonna help to make it look a little bit more realistic. And you can bring it, it right near your frog. You can bring it, you know, all the way down at the bottom. However much more grass you feel what it would take to make it look as realistic as you want. And then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you have your ground finished, you can put your large brush away wherever you'd like to. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are painting some rain. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using black and white paint, and I'll also be using some water to do this. So I'm gonna be making two kinds of rain. I'm gonna have out of focus rain and in focus rain. So my out of focus rain is gonna be the rain that's behind the big mushroom, and it's gonna be off in the distance, so it'll be within these parameters of the big um, one. So my out of focus rain is gonna be back in through here and my in focus rain is gonna be on the top 
and along the sides. So in my painterly head, this mushroom edge sticks out past my, <laughs> outside of the canvas. So I'm not gonna have any in-focus rain in front of this mushroom um, so we can keep these guys our, our main focus here. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I am taking a little bit of black, some white, and adding a whole bunch of water to it. So I really want this to be very fluid. You can always add more paint to your canvas, but I, to be on the safe side, you really just wanna have very little bit of paint on your brush with a lot of water on your brush. So once you've got your runny gray paint, I'm actually gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up just a tiny bit because my brush would have been overloaded from mixing. So I picked up just a tiny bit of it and I'm gonna wipe it off on my brush again. I'm doing my out of focus rain first. So this is just gonna be back in through these areas and it's gonna be very, very little bit of paint something like this and it will dry a little bit more see-through what when it's dry than when it is when it's wet because you're using water with white paint and it will end up drying darker so if it's a bit bright for you initially don't worry about it, it doesn't all have to come straight down you can put it a little bit at the sides and right now i have hardly any paint on my brush and i'm and i'm going a little bit faster now because i'm i'm feeling nice and safe with it and i'm getting just a couple of pieces that are out of focus back there which is awesome now i'm going to reload my brush with the mixture on my palette. And this is gonna be my in-focus rain. So I'm gonna be pushing a little bit harder, but not a lot. I'm gonna go a little bit slower so I can kind of see where I want these pieces of rain to be. I'm not pushing hard at all. And I don't necessarily need them to come down at the same angle. You can have longer ones, you can have shorter ones, but the key for me is just don't press really hard. So once I find myself feeling like I'm running out of paint, then I'll, I'll pick up more. But right now I'm feeling like I've, I've got a good amount on my brush. They are gonna hit my, my mushroom cap itself. So I'm gonna get some to just kind of hit that cap itself. And I'm just getting more and more to come down. And you can see mine are not all coming at the same angle. I've got some a little bit thicker than others. I feel like I need to reload my brush at this point because it's splaying out a little bit on me. So that tells me it's time to reload. I'm putting some longer ones coming down these sides. This is a little bit more in focus. Now what I'm gonna do, I've got a, a good amount of, of that on there. I want a couple of brighter pieces as well as splash pieces. So I'm gonna start with some splashes with that gray um, mixture that I have on my brush right now. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a splash happening over here on the left hand side of this. So just almost like dotting some, some bigger raindrops. I'm gonna do the same thing. Maybe I'll have a little, a little splashy area in through here and maybe one over in through here. So just some little splash marks or some thicker dots and then you can kind of just pull out a little bit. And what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna add some lighter raindrops. So I'm utilizing that mixture, I'm gonna add a touch more white to it. So this will give me even more in focus pieces of rain. And then I'll do a couple of white splashes on top of here. So I'm bringing it into more of a focal type of rain by adding some a couple of lighter pieces into it. I'm not doing a ton of lighter pieces, just a few to make sure that the illusion is there, that it is, you know, rain that's in focus as opposed to the out of focus stuff that we have down below. So something like this, and then maybe we've got a couple of pieces up in through here. 
I'm going to start adding my little splashes now. So in through here, again, I don't need to go too extravagant and add a million little splashes, just enough to say, yeah, there's a, you know, maybe there's an, a, a tree up above that is, you know, or a leaf that has filled up with water that's just, you know, splashing down in this one particular area. So don't feel like you have to go hog wild with it. Just, you know, getting a couple of um, additional pieces of information in here is all you need. So I've just got a little bit of that extra brightness to provide that look. Oh, I think that's looking pretty good. All right, so we have one tiny little step left to go and it's gonna be with your small brush. So once you've got your rain raining down on your, on your beautiful painting, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. I think I'm signing this one in the bottom left. I'm gonna do my initials, but you could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want to be your identifying mark is all that you need to do. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cute and adorable frog who's just waiting for the rain to stop. <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.